Hello, it's Joe Glines, and in this video we're going to demonstrate logging into LinkedIn. So this is a, a series of videos I'm doing of practicing web scraping by logging into different websites. Um, web pages are often, the, the login page are usually defined pretty well, and so we're going to give a, an example here of logging into LinkedIn using uh, my WB2 Learner tool in AutoHotKey. So first I'm going to launch my, this is just a, a script I use to help me writing my um, understanding what's on the page, right? And so first off, we got the URL here where we're going to go. Then I just grabbed the um, email session, right? And so this is where it's telling me the name and ID. And both of these are getting populated from this outer HTML that's around this uh, element here in this form entry. And we're going to go back to the script. So first off, actually, what we want to do is we want to navigate to this page, right? So I'm going to take that URL. I have a, um, you know what, I meant to get rid of this, uh, just to show. This is my script. It's my web scraping writer script. And so the first thing we want to do is connect with this current version of IE. So I'm going to, um, I don't want to create an IE object. I'm going to go ahead and just connect to the current version. And that's what this does here. This is the function call. Um, and here we see how this is the same text. It's going to this line here calls this function and returns back the active window um, in IE and stores a, um, a handle to it here in this variable PWB. And I can I can make sure I've done this right because um, let me see if I throw in a message box here I'm going to say PWB dot location URL that is a special um, method call that says get the active URL so I'm going to save this uh, reload it, and now when I run it, it's going to say this is the active URL, and yeah, that is the right one. Um, it, typically, this function is good about getting the active one, but it's just nice to know if before I try to do too much more, I have an object, it's working the way I think it will, right? So it's just a good uh, troubleshooting type thing. And what we're going to want to do is, is navigate, because I won't necessarily be on this page, right? I found the page I want to navigate to, so we're going to say... Uh, now I want to navigate, navigate to page, and I'm going to dump this in here. However, well, let me let me do this. Let me hit this other page. Now, when I, oops, I didn't save my script. I think, oh, I did. Okay, I'm going to reload it. When I run it, it's going to navigate to that page. See how it's loading? All right. Now the thing is, and here's two things. One was I didn't add in a wait time, which I should have. But the other one is, if I run the script right now, it's going to re-navigate to the same page I'm already on, right? So why don't we leverage? It's very simple to add a little bit of logic. We're going to say if could be location um, is not equal to. So if it's oh, let me close my parens. So if it's not equal to that, then we're going to do, and because it's going to be more than one line, um, we need to put it in brackets. In auto hotkey, if it was just one line, you would just need this. You wouldn't need the brackets. But because we're going to add in, we want it to sleep and wait. So page navigation, wait for page to load. And now this is basically saying, um, hey, if the URL is not this, go ahead and navigate to it, and then wait for it to be... Um, Wait, if it's still busy, or if, if the ready state's not equal to 4, which is done, then just sleep, and it, it'll just sit here for this loop here, um, over and over and over until it finally gets past that, and then it'll get down to here. Now, because I'm on this page, it'll go from right here, it'll check this logic, and then because it is the URL, it'll jump right to this, right? But what we're going to do here is let's go back to this. Let me make sure I... Oh, see, see the asterisk here? I hadn't saved the script, so I'm going to save it, reload it. Now when I launch it, it'll, it'll navigate there, and it actually waited for the page to load, and then now we're here, right? So now we can start filling out this form. And again, we're going to get first get this first one, and let's go ahead and use the session ID. Um, C, which I'll, I'll zoom in here and cite on it, but um, there's a, a dash in here. When it's a dash for an ID... We're going to say set on page, set ID with dashes. So see this second one, this first one, is if it doesn't have dashes, the syntax is just a little bit cleaner. But honestly, you should probably just stick with this one. Um, and then you just learn one, right? So we're going to set it, and let's set the value to be my email address. 
And now I'm going to reload this and I launch it, but notice because we're on this page, it's not going to navigate you know, back to it or away from it. It's just going to dump it in there. And there it goes. All right, so there's the first one. Um, now we need the password. So that, and let's go ahead and stick with using the get element by ID because then all I have to do is I'm going to hit control D in site, which duplicates a line. I'm going to swap this out here, and I'm just going to put in, I'm not going to put in my real password. I'm going to put in, here, here's a, here we go, the stupidest password. Um, now this, it will, will notice, I'm going to save it, reload it, and let's go ahead and get rid of this just so you can see it. Um, when I launch it, there, it, it dumped in that and that, but of course we still need to click the sign in. So let's see what this one is. Here, oh look, they do have an ID, so we can just stick with it. Um, go back to our script, duplicate that line, put this here, and now, so so let me demonstrate a couple things here real quickly. Um, we don't want that because we're just we're gonna we we what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna click it. But for now, I'm gonna throw up a message box and say, "Give me this value." And so see how it says sign in, and see how this says value. Um, if I change this to outer HTML, it would give us what is down here, right? Which of course we're not trying to get that. All I'm doing is making sure I'm on the right one. Right, so um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to do a function call, which is click. And so uh, we reload it. So now and save it, reload it. Now when I do this, it should, um, you know, what? I'll clear that, clear that. It should fill these two in, hit submit, and because it's not my real password, of course, it should error out, um, come back and error out. Let's see what happens here. Oops. Ha. Well, it did it. What again? What I forgot to do is I left the message box here, right? Um, which we're we're not trying to display a value that we're getting. So all I wanted to do was to click, and so that was my bad. I I had forgot to change that back. But here it's alerting me that like, hey, you know what? That wasn't the right password. Um, but that's it. Um, if if this click doesn't happen, you can try a couple different things. So you might throw in here. A, um, under clicking, you can say fire event change or fire click. And what I would do here, it, um, let me go ahead and expand this now that we don't need the other thing. Sometimes these are needed in conjunction with the click, right? Um, and I think actually I'd want that. It, I don't think it really matters if it's before or after, but I'm going to put it there. And then what I'm going to do is borrow this first part and replace everything from there, right? So see how it's exactly the same thing. It's basically going to navigate to the same spot on the page and we're going to fire an event called on click and the other one um, that if that doesn't work, we're going to duplicate that and let me pull it up just to make sure. I think it's um, on change. So we can just copy this. Whoops. Put it there. And those two things um, in conjunction with the click more often than not will work. Some pages have a very specific thing that they're looking for and uh, you got to create an event on the page and send like a mouse down or a mouse up or a keyboard press but uh, generally speaking this is the uh, these will work for you and in this example here we're just doing it by get element by ID we could have used the name and so let's let's I'm not going to change it all but um, set on page let's say set name array and <coughs> we would take this put it here and because the um a, the, it is possible for there to be more than one of the same names on a page, um, you need to set the, this is an array, and you set the very first one, it's zero based. So you would set it here. Let's go ahead, which one, sign in, I want to sign in, session login. Which one did I grab? Oh, I'm still on the sign in thing. I'm sorry, let me, let me, I want to demonstrate just it working on, on one. So let's go back in here. So they named this session key. We're going to name this session key. And we're going to move it up to replace that one. right? And you'll notice here we're going to put in a bunch of X's. Come back here. Um, hit the hotkey. And so it pushed in a bunch of X's there. Um, and that's just using the get elements by name. And notice the S here, get elements by name, and this is element by ID. That's because, again, this is an array, 
and it could be multiple ones, and this will set, um, the zero will set the first one, one would set the second one, and so on. That's it. Thank you.